Hi, my name is Steve Walker from Promise Money and today I'm going to talk about buying property through a limited company. We're talking about buy to let property predominantly but it can also apply to commercial property. So do you want to own property in a buy to let company or do you want to own it personally? Well there's lots of pros and cons and you'll hear an awful lot talked about tax but there's an awful lot more to it than that. Um, but before we start, let's make an assumption that you're watching this and you're just finding your way through this maze at the moment um, and, and talk very briefly about, well, what is a limited company? So a limited company separates the responsibilities of the shareholders and that has its own assets as well as its own debts. Um, so if the company goes into the debt, uh, it's not the business owner's responsibility. If worse, the company goes bust, it limits the amount of money that um, that you as the owner of the company might have to pay to the people that the company owes money to. So um, the only thing that the owner would normally lose is money that is personally invested in the company, i.e. you've put a loan into the business to get it going, or if you've um, taken out any personal guarantee. So you've taken borrowing and offered a per uh, taken company borrowing but offered a personal guarantee. Um, so as a director and owner of a limited company, you are going to have two roles. As a director, you work for the company and you manage it for the benefit of the shareholders uh, and you're likely to take a salary for this and be paid under PAYE. As a shareholder, you benefit from the profits of the company um, and you also suffer the losses, but you can, uh, you can choose to take profits by way of a dividend. And the main difference uh, to being a sole trader is the corporate structure and reporting requirements and how tax is treated. Um, you, I'll talk about the tax in a moment, but uh, you obviously have fewer li liabilities if you're a director of a company and the business fails owing, owning money. Um, now, if you choose to operate as a limited company in the UK, you have to register at Companies House. Uh, it then becomes its own organisation, has to submit annual returns to Companies House. So expect some relatively low accountancy or administrative charges associated with having a limited company unless you deal with it yourself. Um, and do the tax returns yourself. Let's talk about the pros and cons of owning property in a limited company versus owning personally. Firstly, within a limited company, there are tax benefits. The income from the rent uh, that you get from the properties the, property, uh, the, the business owns is liable to corporation tax instead of personal income tax. So this could be more tax efficient, especially if you're a high rate taxpayer. Uh, tax benefit number two, the amount you pay in interest on your mortgages can also be offset against your rental income. So that reduces your taxable profit. You can't do that any longer as effectively if it's personally owned. So if you have a mortgage on the property, the taxable profits can be lower and the rate of tax you pay on those profits can also be lower. Also, your personal finances and assets are more protected within a limited company scenario um, because you have limited liability privileges and it can be easier to manage uh, the ownership and profits by having multiple shareholders and directors within a limited company. Uh, you can also retain the money in the company and roll it over to fund further acquisitions without paying further tax, which is handy. Uh, and you might be entitled to different borrowing terms as a limited company that you wouldn't get personally. Not necessarily cheaper, but different. Um, so now the disadvantages of maybe owning buy to let property in a, uh, in, in a limited company. Well, this is a big one that you need to need to think about. Fewer mainstream lenders will consider lending to limited companies with less competition. You might end up with a higher interest rate, a lower LTV um, or in very co complex circumstances, no options at all. Also, the fees on limited company buy to lets tend to be higher. Not only do the lender fees tend to be higher, um, but also there could be legal fees when buying or remortgaging property. You've also then got uh, matters relating to uh, affordability and the rental yields. And uh, with lenders in this sector uh, on, uh, for limited company buy to lets, they tend to be a little bit more cautious on what they will take in terms of the income and rental coverage on those properties. I'll cover that in a bit as well. Also, you're going to have charges such as corporation tax, filing annual accounts at company's house, and sometimes accountancy fees, depending on how you handle it. Um, and despite the limited liability advantage of a limited company, some lenders may still ask you to guarantee the debt personally, particularly on 
larger, more complex commercial transactions. So in that scenario, you still could be held financially responsible for any personal guarantees that you've provided. So you need to carefully weigh up the pros and cons before investing in property through, uh, through your company and get professional advice, particularly tax advice. So let's talk about eligibility for a moment. Um, so lenders will lend to a business that's an existing trading limited company um, and is used to purchase property. They're happy to lend to a special purpose vehicle, which, an SPV as it's known in the trade, which is a limited company set up specifically to purchase the property. Um, you could be starting up your own limited company at the time of purchase, for example. Uh, you could be switching from an individual owned property and moving it into a limited company structure. Um, and it, it could be a limited company with and without personal guarantees. Uh, it, it doesn't matter so much, but the criteria isn't going to massive uh, isn't going to change massively but there's less choice that's the key thing there's less choice if you are borrowing uh, through a limited company so um, you may you may get circa 85 percent of the value of the property but there's less lenders doing it interest only still going to be available um, you might be able to get 125 percent um, income coverage ratio uh, but there'll be more of it at 140 um, percent so that means that the rent needs to cover at least 125% of the annual loan repayments. Uh, the key point here is with less lenders to choose from, you're not going to have so much choice. So if you're on the edge of criteria um, or we've got a few factors that need to be accommodated, it's not so easy to accommodate them. Factors like your experience, income, credit history, whether you're a homeowner, etc., do have an impact. So you need to choose a decent broker with whole market experience in both buy to let residential and commercial mortgages plus second charge uh, loans bridging uh, and has access to specialist lenders too but that you won't find on the high street because if you're getting into that area of um, uh, of limited company buy to lets you might need to leverage other different products to make it all work for you because you have less choice so a key thing here is don't make your life more difficult than it needs to be if you want to get a good choice and possibly better rates Try not, try not to add more restrictions and uh, to uh, try not to make the application more difficult for a lender to say yes. So, for example, avoid borrowing through a business that trades in a different industry. If you've got a business that sells paint, maybe you don't want to be buying the limited company within that business entity um, because some lenders won't like it. Um, being a homeowner is already uh, is already more attractive to lenders than being a tenant because you've got less assets. Having previous experience in property and buy to lets is always going to help. Uh, choose a standard property. Don't go for something that's really wacky. Go for something that's readily saleable and that lenders are happy to lend on, and and it's and it's easily saleable because some lenders don't accommodate uh, quirky property. For instance, holiday lets, HMOs. A lot do, but some don't. Ideally, the property should be rented on a standard short-hold tenancy agreement. Uh, so renting to other companies or unusual leases adds a complexity which some lenders don't cope well with. Uh, avoid complex multi-layered company structures with larger numbers of directors or shareholders. You know, keep it to four if you can. Um, less is even better. Uh, and avoid foreign investment uh, in the business or cash in your company because lenders want to know who's involved and where there's money come from. And uh, they want to see the credit history of those individuals. Uh, also, don't assume that you can borrow your deposit from another lender. Some lenders prefer to see you've saved the money yourself and they call it having some skin in the game. You've saved the money and you're putting your money in. If you're putting somebody else's money in, lenders are gonna say, well, okay, we, we, we'd like to see that it's your money. Um, an exception could be where uh, the deposit is coming from a gift from a close family and I do mean gift not a loan um, and of course make sure your credit his credit history as good is as good as it could be don't appoint point a director has got bad credit now I'm talking about these scenarios and it doesn't mean that uh, they can't be catered for for but what it does mean is if you've got these scenarios within your application is going to knock a few lenders or different plans out so it just makes the job harder try and make it as easy as you possibly can okay um, because making it harder could lead to you needing either a larger deposit uh, paying higher rates um, and a more challenging application process so speak to a broker at an early stage about eligibility so you know what your options are 
for financing the proposed purchase. And if you are at an early stage and you're just getting going, well, have those conversations now because you might be able to change your circumstances by the time you actually come to finding the property you want. So let's talk about tax now. What's the difference, difference in tax? Well, income tax. On personally owned properties and partnerships, uh, when a private landlord rents out the property, that's with the exception of personally owned furnished holiday lets, the rental income is taxed as personal income. So it could easily be 40% tax. And private landlords can only claim 20% of the uh, mortgage interest and finance costs as uh, allowable costs, i.e. set it against their tax. So in a scenario where you've got rent of £10,000 and let's say £1,000 for your repairs and all the rest of it, and £7,000 uh, interest that you're paying every year, your actual profit on that is £2,000. Um, but you'll be assessed for, for income tax on £8,000 because you can't offset all of the, uh, all of the interest. So you, your tax could be higher than your profit. Now turning to income tax uh, in a limited company scenario, the company only pays currently circa 19% in corporation tax on the rental income, which is a lot less than 40 odd percent. Um, additionally, companies can claim mortgage interest as a business expense. That's the big difference. So that reduces the amount that is taxed. So in the same scenario I just gave you, if the rent is £10,000 less £1,000 in repairs and interest of £7,000, the actual, uh, the actual profit is £2,000 and you'll be assessed on £2,000, not the higher number, okay? Um, so the rate of tax is potentially lower and the tax is paid on a far lower amount. So this looks pretty good, doesn't it, you know? But it, gets, it does get more complicated because the rental income your company makes belongs to the company, it doesn't belong to you. You're the director and you've made all this money for the company, but as a shareholder, you've then got to work out how you're going to get it out of the company. And if you want to get it out of the company, you may have to pay more income tax to do so. So you could pay yourself a normal salary as an employee through PAYE, or you could pay yourself in dividends. The key point is this does give you more options on how and when you declare this income. Another upside is, if, if, is, it, is that if you uh, retain profits or cash in the company, you can use it to fund your next project without f paying for further tax. You can roll it over and keep using it. Um, or uh, you could use uh, the profits within the company via an intercompany loan to benefit a different but connected limited company. Key point here is get advice, uh, get specific tax advice on this. Right, now moving on to stamp duty. Well, this needs to be paid each time the property is purchased, uh, including transferring a property from personal to company ownership. So if you're looking to move it from personal to company ownership, you're going to be hit with stamp duty in virtually every case. There are various rates of stamp duty uh, and you'd be surprised how many people come to us and forget they've got to pay stamp duty. Even more people forget that you have to pay more if it's not your main residence. So the, the, the rates vary. Uh, if you already own a property, uh, they vary by purchase price, whether or not you're a first time buyer and whether or not you're a UK resident. Um, it's the same rate whether you, own the, whether you own the property personally or within a limited company. Um, but remember, there is an additional investment property stamp duty tax of 3%. So it's an extra surcharge of 3% over and above what you would pay if you were buying property. Remember that because at the outset you need to factor that into your borrowings or your cash or your deposit. It's going to have an impact if you forget about it. Now there are some re reliefs and exemptions available to offset stamp duty for more complex scenarios uh, such as relief for multiple de dwellings but don't rely on it. It's, it's, it's pretty rare so talk to an expert in tax about these and when I say an expert in tax I don't necessarily mean your accountant. I mean a property tax expert because your accountant might not be up to speed on all of this. Move on to something else that's gonna cost you, capital gains tax. So again, there's no difference whether the property is personally owned or in a limited company, but where property is being transferred from personal ownership to a limited company structure, a capital gains tax liability could arise based on the market value of the property being transferred. This means on transfer, um, as a landlord, you may incur up to 28% tax charge on the market value of the property, even where no money has changed hands. And that raises, that raises the question of why bother moving it from personal ownership to limited company ownership. 
Um, the date of the transfer also, also crystallized the capital gains tax at that moment and valuation. So actually, as part of a strategy to pay the tax now and not pay it later could work well for you because if your property hasn't gone up greatly in value but you think it's going to in the near future, well, crystallize that tax now and move it across into the, into the uh, limited company. Um, whilst it can be sold in the future, the capital gains tax will only arise on the gain from the date of that transfer. And also if you're trading properties within that company, then that could move from, co from corporation tax into a trading corporation tax. So rather than tax on profit capital gains, you might be able to um, play with that in terms of how it's handled by your accountant. Again, take advice. Um, there are some reliefs from capital gains tax when transferring ownership of property into a limited company, uh, which, um, and th that allows gains to be rolled over and set against the cost of the shares in the new company. Get, get specialist advice on that. I'm going to touch on inheritance tax now, um, and this is why it's important to think about all of these things now. Um, because you don't know what you might be doing in the future, but if you've got a clue, you need to factor all these things in. So inheritance tax, holding property in a limited company gives you more options and it could be a simpler, uh, simpler way when planning for inheritance tax. Where a property business transfers um, to a limited company, the shares in the company form part of the individual estate when they die. Now, this can differ greatly from the value of properties. So th the shares of the value of the business versus a property, well, the shares of the value of the business is much more difficult to establish. The value of the property, if it's owned personally, is very easy to establish. This is also a point to think about the activities of the company because the shares in a property investment company, which deals in residential buy-to-lets, are inside the scope of inheritance tax. However, the shares in a property which is involved in development could qualify for business property relief. Now, many landlords are involved in both being uh, owners of investment property and developing investment property. So it's important to understand these distinctions um, and a business that does both may find that investment activity impacts on the availability of the reliefs you can get. So think about inheritance tax, talk to an expert. OK, um, you'll see on our website, there's a, there's a table, a comparison table for property taxes uh, for personally owned and limited company landlords. Um, so check that out, um, but um, I'll now move on to just a little bit about setting up a property company to build a portfolio. So you'll need to register it at Companies House uh, with a small fee and you'll be required to fill in some information such as name the company address, directors, etc. Uh, and you'll find links on that on our website as well. It's, it's pretty straightforward um, and the links explain everything you need to do in detail. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, it'll help you fill everything out. But after your company is registered, you'll have to create a business bank account uh, and as well, you'll have to register to pay your corporation tax. And that's pretty easy to do as well. But even so, you've got to be, you've got to be familiar with the responsibilities of owning a company uh, and the costs that come with that uh, and keeping tabs on your records. Many people have an accountant to do this. I'd recommend research it yourself. It's not going to take long so that you've got a really good idea of what's involved. Uh, I'm going to talk now about SPV limited companies because if you are, if you don't have a suitable company, you're probably going to set up an SPV, a special purposes vehicle limited company, which only trades in buying and managing property. And you can hold multiple properties within that company. And that's what lenders are used to seeing. They're used to seeing an SPV. It's no different to setting up any other company. You register online uh, as before, and it only takes a few minutes. Um, but for SPV limited companies, getting a buy-to-let could be easier than, uh, than trying to buy a buy-to-let or raise finance on a buy-to-let in a company which does other things. If your company does other things other than um, owning properties, it's likely to have a set of trading accounts. We'll come back to the, the scenario that you sell paint. So that forces a lender's underwriter to look at the accounts of your paint company. They don't want to do that. Therefore, some lenders just don't consider it. They don't have uh, the expertise in-house to read a set of accounts in that level of detail, or they choose not to, or they see it as an additional risk. So with an SPV, you might find it's easier for a lender to assess the risk, to underwrite your application, therefore you might get more choice. Um, finally now, moving your property into a limited company 
from, per from it being personally owned. If you want to transfer your buy to lets, it is going to involve extra costs. And as a reminder, it could be capital gains tax. It could be legal fees. It could be stamp duty. Uh, and it's, it's likely to mean a sale and a repurchase, so two sets of legal fees. The cost can be significant, so we recommend speaking to a property tax specialist to find out more. So what should you do now? If you already own property in your personal name, get advice and consider moving it into a limited company after you've got that advice. If you're buying property, get advice and consider how you'll own that asset, taking everything into consideration, not just the tax position. And the advice you need is going to be from a property tax specialist and from a broker who covers the whole market because you need to bring in to play the advice about what's going to be available to you in terms of borrowing and the hoops you might have to jump through from that point of view and on the other side of the table the tax advantages and disadvantages. There's a lot there, it's heavy stuff. I hope it's been informative, uh, I hope it's given you some things to think about. Please um, subscribe to our channel, we've got an awful lot going on um, specifically aimed at uh, landlords and property investors so uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel please like our YouTube please like our videos and um, if you haven't already subscribed to our newsletters you can do that too um, go to uh, www.promisemoney.co.uk thanks for your time bye bye